Hello, folks. I'm Ernest Huber, I'm, and I'm a Republican running for Congress in Washington State's 8th District. I'm a fiscal and social conservative, a former Issaquah Regional Republican chair, a retired Navy lieutenant commander, and a Gonzaga University graduate. Google Ernest Huber for Congress and read my detailed platform. Our nation is dying. That makes me very mad. I've spoken with thousands of you, and I know you're also very mad. I will do my best in Congress to help save our nation. I enlisted during the Vietnam War when I was 17 and retired 30 years later. I will continue to fight for you in Congress. I can do nothing less. We face two grave national threats, political and economic. Our political threat is Barack Obama. Our economic threat is the Federal Reserve. Logically, my main duty as your congressman must be the arrest and jailing of Barack Obama and his gang for massive criminality. My next duty is the closure of the Federal Reserve and the arrest and jailing of its owners and executives for massive criminality. I will fight those threats from the floor of the House so you won't one day have to fight them from the floor of your house. Dave Reichert, my opponent, has not fought those threats. By his votes, he has betrayed the Constitution and we the people. Reichert voted for the notorious cap-and-trade bill. That bill was written by the Communist Apollo Alliance. That alliance was led by the Communist Van Jones, Obama's green job czar. If that bill is ever enacted, it will destroy our economy and usher in a dictatorship based on the global uh, climate change hoax. I would have voted no. Reichert sold us out with that one vote alone and many more. Reichert also voted for the TARP bill, which was Barney Frank's $700 billion embezzlement scam of stealing taxpayers' money and giving it to his banking cronies, who were too big to fail. But we are now finding out that the planned cost of that scam is a massive $23 trillion. No one can pay that. We were sold into slavery. I would have voted no. Reichert must go. He also voted for the Omnibus Public Land Management Act. It's a monster version of the King County Critical Areas Ordinance. By his vote, Reichert took millions of acres of private property and natural resources from the citizens and gave them to government employees. Slaves have no property rights. I would have voted no. It gets worse. Reichert voted to ban needed oil drilling in Anwar. I would have voted to drill. Reichert voted twice to give special rights and protection to sex addicts in the Hate Crimes Act. This kind of anti-Christian legislation is being used to harass pastors and attack churches. I would have voted no. He despicably voted to starve to death Terry Schiavo. I would have voted to, to save Terry's life. That's what we're supposed to do as humans. Reichert's voting has been evaluated as supporting constitutional principles only 35% of the time, contributing to the worst constitutional crisis in our nation's history. In a large ongoing national poll, he has an F an F for his horrible congressional performance. Now these are just a few examples of Reichert's record. It is what it is. He's a Didi Skazafava in rhino's clothing. He has sold us out and he can't be trusted. He has disqualified himself for office. On to Obama. By far, the most serious threat to our national security is Barack Obama. Let's be honest. He and his gang are communist revolutionaries. They're trying to install a communist dictatorship. They are America's enemies. They deceptively used our political process to infiltrate the presidency and are now rapidly dismantling our constitutional government. Overwhelming evidence justifies their immediate arrest and jailing for RICO violations, sedition, treason, and national security offenses. If they are unlawful combatants, they should be handled as terrorists. When conservatives take the House and Senate, Obama and his communists can still continue to destroy our nation. They must be quickly removed. 
Impeachment can come later. The primary threat has to be immediately stopped. The Senate can direct its sergeant at arms to arrest and jail Obama and his gang. Any federal judge or prosecutor can direct the arrests. Any federal law enforcement officer or citizen can make the arrests. But the arrests and jailings must happen fast if we are to survive. This effort will take a different kind of conservative in Congress. In order to prevail against hardcore communist revolutionaries, you must send the most hardcore conservative patriots to Congress. Don't send pacifists or appeasers or common sense Mr. Nice Guys or diplomats or negotiators or consensus builders or glib party hacks or rhino incumbents or peacocks or the kind and the sensitive. They will be eaten alive. You must send conservative warriors to defeat the communist revolutionaries. I'm ready to go. This war will not be won by the passive resistance of Gandhi or Martin Luther King. That technique works against civilized Christian governments, but it doesn't work against the communist octopus whose head must first be attacked, then its tentacles. You can't be free and be a pacifist. Those who say you can are either very stupid or very bad or both. Pacifism got us here and it won't save us. Our founding fathers handled tyrants very well. Now the Federal Reserve, there is no national debt. There are no unfunded liabilities. Social Security is not bankrupt. You owe no income tax and you never have. And here's why. It costs pennies to print a Federal Reserve note. It costs the same to print a Treasury note. Both notes are backed by nothing. Both notes perform the same function of facilitating commerce. The difference is we pay the Federal Reserve bankers the face value plus interest to borrow their Federal Reserve monopoly notes. If we print and prudently use our own Treasury notes or monopoly money, we pay nothing and incur no debt. Since the Federal Reserve notes are backed by nothing, there is really no debt. There is also no need to pay a tax for a debt that doesn't exist and has never existed. It's been a gigantic scam. Unfunded liabilities can be paid by debt-free and interest-free Treasury notes because Congress is constitutionally empowered to do that as a sovereign. Income tax collection by Congress is also constitutionally optional not mandatory. The federal government can uh, fund itself without borrowing and without taxing. It will require courageous conservatives to make that happen. I'll work to make that happen. The federal government must never borrow anything again. The resulting fake debt has been used to justify taxing and disempowering us to enrich and empower criminals. In conclusion, we're in this war together, folks, whether you're Republican, Independent, Tea Party, or Libertarian, or Traditional Democrat. There are many battles to be fought. I volunteered to lead this one in this congressional race, but I can't win it without you, nor should I. You must fight beside me. I'm not your hired gun or your political entertainer. This is no longer a spectator sport. If you want to keep your freedom, then join me and vote for me in the primary and general elections. Vote and volunteer like your very lives depend on it, because they do.